honey, we're home. I just found this livery for the Milviz Corsair. And I had to have it. It's awesome. So this is an airplane that Cook Cleland owned. And he was quite the character. I'm just going to give you the short. You can look him up on YouTube or on uh Everything's on YouTube. You can look them up on uh, Google or whatever, Wikipedia. But I'll just give you the short story. So he flew dive bombers in World War II, SBDs and Vindicators, I think. He became an ace <laughs> flying dive bombers. He was on the USS Wasp when it was sunk. He was rescued. Then after the war, he bought a surplus Corsair, this one, and he raced it in the Cleveland Air Races in 1946, and he came in sixth place, and that was the year I think Tex Johnson won the won the uh, Thompson Trophy with that uh, Cobra II, the P-39, the yellow one. But anyway, so his plane wasn't fast enough, so he bought four F2G Corsairs with the corn cob engines and he proceeded to win the Thompson Trophy in 40, 1947 and again in 49 and this airplane was used for spare parts for those other airplanes but what the remains of it are still in storage somebody has them somewhere but anyway on with the story here so yeah, so he bought this airplane, and the reason that the city of Painesville is painted on the side of it is because he loaned it or rented it to a female pilot uh, by the name of, the name is slipping my mind right now, Margaret, somebody starts with an H. Anyway, she won, well, she didn't win. She won in, uh, I think she won in 46, one of the races, uh, Flying Texans in the you know the female category in the women's race but anyway she used this airplane to set a women's speed record of 337 miles an hour breaking Jackie Cochran's old record of 292 and then she got she was killed in an air show later the same year flying a Texan And then, like I said, this airplane became spare parts. But uh, so the Korean War comes along, and Cook Cleland decides to. Oh, before that, he buys an airport. So he bought an airport near Willoughby, Ohio, and, the, and it was the Euclid Avenue Airport. And, you know, he, he operated that for a little while. And then, then the Korean War comes along. And he goes back to war. And he's flying Corsairs in Korea. 67 combat missions. Gets shot down <laughs> in Korea. Gets rescued the same day, apparently. I don't know the whole story of that mission, but I'm going to look into it because this guy is a, has a horseshoe up his butt. And then, you know, he lives to the ripe old age of 90. So when he left for Korea, basically his airport, the Euclid Avenue airport, became, it was sold off, I guess. It was, you know, turned into industrial area, rezoned, whatever. But there's still one building standing today. The original hangar building, this one right here, is all that's left of that old airport and it still stands. And that's where we are right now <laughs> in the simulator on the site of the old Euclid Avenue airport. And you'd never tell, you could never tell by looking around that there was an airport here or an airfield, I think. I don't even think there was paved runways there, but this Corsair sat pretty much right where it is now at some point 
in the past. So I just wanted to show you guys that. It's a cool story. And the fact that the that hangar building still remains. And the only way out of here is up. So let's get uh, let's see if we can get this engine started. Fuel tank. Let's put it on the main tank or the reserve tank for starting. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to go Control E because I'm just I'm not doing a review on this airplane. I did a review for P3D, and it's basically the same airplane. Looks the same. I think it's probably the same model. Some upgrades on it, like you can open up the wing gun bays here, which is pretty cool. Maybe you could before, but I never noticed it. Uh, you know, some things, you know, the balance tabs don't work on the ailerons or the elevator. And it's been updated. The flight model's been um, tweaked a little bit since it was released made a little bit more forgiving I would say uh, we can talk about that a little bit more I gotta get this engine going hopefully it starts come on baby sometimes it takes a while fuel pumps running doesn't want to go no, it's dying down. Start. Uh, is it going to go? It's going. It's going. Tree fitty. There she goes. Okay, finally. Okay, starter can go off. It is off. Okay, turn the fuel pump off. are up. Okay. So yeah, the only way out of here is up. See if I can't show you in the air what this thing looks like. I'm close my canopy. It's a little breezy in here. So we're looking at, uh, if you want to find it yourself, all right, there's these two major highways right here, and then there's another one right here. Anyways, if you're looking down, you need to get a little closer, but it's right, right in here. able to find it is find this little circular pad of concrete right here and then just go straight down so that menu disappears so that's it right there right there <laughs> right there right there so this whole plot of land right here would have been the, the airfield all right here or you could find this baseball diamond and just kind of go across the street from there. Or whatever this is, this school here, or some kind of hospital or something, building, I don't know. Right across the road from there. Little hangar right there, a little white building. So 
So that's in Willoughby, Willoughby, Ohio, which is just east of Cleveland. And the Willoughby Airport is just off to our right, right there. And we got this other uh, smokestacks here. Oh, there's somebody flying off the CRJ. If I can fly between the smokestacks, let's pretend it's a pylon. This might be the end of the video. Oh yeah! The city of Painesville is just down the way here. Just a little bit down the way. I think it's close to this river here. Just before we get to that river. So this might be the Painesville area right in here. Where Margaret was from. And if it's not this river, it's the next one. But it's not far anyways, down the ways here. I was thinking it's a little further down to the next river that comes in. There's another one down here somewhere. Anyway. I just wanted to show you guys, tell you guys that little story about this livery. And we'll just go back and land now at Willoughby airport here. The new airport. Okay, gears going down. Let's go 10, 20, 30 on the flaps. Open the canopy. Trim nose up. Prop full forward. Mixture auto rich. Supercharger in neutral. Trim is set. Tail wheel is locked. Fuel tank on the main. Temperature, cylinder temperature is good. Cal flaps are closed. Like I said, I'm still debating on whether to actually do a review on this airplane or not. I don't think it's, I don't think I need to. Like I said, I already did it for P3D and I think it flies better in that sim right now. But it's a gorgeous model, I mean, obviously. Gorgeous model. And uh, it might be a little bit limited in what it can do right now with uh, who knows where the SDK's at. Changes every day. Like I said, I think this sim is just in a state of limbo right now. Hybrid, it's a hybrid sim right now so some things you know work some things don't sound effects are good okay we got a hundred knots there now I don't want to get much slower than that we need to save some speed for the round out here I'll add a little bit of power maybe like 20 inches Okay, let's start rounding it out. And now we'll cut the power and hold it off. Oops. OK, 
Okay, nice. Stay on the runway. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Sometimes the wingtip wants to lift. And that's because the dihedral effect, I think, is too great. It's exaggerated. So when you get a little bit sideways, it wants to roll. And go easy on the brakes so you don't nose over. I mean, the brakes will hold it against pretty much full power without the tail lifting. But if you go full brakes on when you're trying to stop, it some, somehow uh, wants to tip up. Okay. So yeah, like I said, I think the dihedral effect is exaggerated. Like, if there's any side slip, it wants to roll a little too much. Like, it takes almost full aileron to compensate at lower speeds, and I think that's probably not accurate. But other than that, this wasn't meant to be a complete review, so... Let's uh, shut the engine off when the propeller stops. Looks like the inertia is pretty good on that propeller there. We'll go magnetos to off. What else can I shut off? Fuel. Tank selector can go to off. And the battery can go off. And that's good enough. So the flaps go down without hydraulic pressure. I think that's how it works. The cowl flaps are supposed to open too. They're spring loaded to open. And the hydraulic pressure keeps them closed. I don't know if that's possible to uh, make that work or not, but they're doing it with the flaps, so why not? Anyway, cool livery I wanted to show you guys. Cool story. That's all for now.